Scientists discover 7 billion year old substance that's raising serious questions. There's a reason entire fields of study are dedicated to looking backwards. Whether experts are piecing together the lives of our early ancestors or creating 3D models of a packed Roman Colosseum, the past helps us better understand ourselves and our place in the universe. Which is why scientists in Australia were ecstatic when they uncovered a mysterious pebble in the carnage of a meteor site. Certain it held answers to history's oldest questions, researchers sought to understand the stone down to its atomic makeup. The implications were even greater than they'd imagined. In September of 1969, a very curious event occurred near Murchison, a small Australian village. Just before 11 a.m., passers-by witnessed a giant ball of fire streak through the sky before splitting into three distinct strands. This event was as terrifying as it was exciting, but the enormity of its significance wouldn't come out until way later. The ball of fire had, in fact, been a meteorite that hurtled towards Earth, and the secrets it was hiding would prove to be great. The so-called Murchison meteorite was one of the most studied of all time due to its size, 220 pounds, and because people saw it falling. However, it wouldn't be until half a century after its initial landing that its true significance was revealed. To understand why the Murchison meteorite is so very groundbreaking to our understanding of the universe, it's necessary to take a step back and understand some crucial facts about an important material contained within the otherworldly rock. Known as pre-solar grains, the particles of stardust are so old they predate the existence of our Sun and solar system. The Murchison meteorite contained an impressive amount of these little molecules. To put in perspective how rare that is, only 5% of meteorites discovered on Earth contain pre-solar grains. However, beyond the unlikely nature of the find, this particular meteorite proved to be special for another reason. So the eager scientists got to work on beginning the process of isolating and testing these fascinating grains. The process itself seems so complicated it's a wonder anyone ever thought it up. First, they had to crush samples taken from the meteorite into a powder. Once in this disintegrated form, it begins to take on a paste-like consistency. One of its qualities is especially stomach-churning. Apparently, the reconstituted form of the meteorite takes on a very pungent and not so pleasant aroma. Those who have smelt it describe the scent as something akin to rotten peanut butter. Yikes! While they might have an overpowering scent, these pre-solar grains are incredibly small, even tinier than a micron. The Murchison grains were much larger, however, measuring between 2 and 30 microns of pop. However, despite the larger-than-normal nature of these particular grains, it still stands that 100 of the largest ever found would still be small enough to fit on the period at the end of a sentence. At this point, these scientists were far from being done with their analysis. They still needed to figure out where the stuff had come from and just exactly how old it really was. In speaking about the chemical processes underlying their research, the study's head author, Philip Heck, explained, Some of these cosmic rays interact with the matter and form new elements, and the longer they get exposed, the more those elements form. In case this seems confusing, Heck also provided an easier-to-understand analogy. I compare this with putting out a bucket in a rainstorm. Assuming the rainfall is constant, the amount of water that accumulates in the bucket tells you how long it was exposed. When the results came back, they were shocked. The majority of the grains were between 4.6 and 4.9 billion years old, with some being more than 5.5 billion years old. However, they also came to an even more curious conclusion. There had been a long-standing debate within the scientific community over whether or not the rate at which stars are formed is constant. This study has garnered pretty solid evidence to support one side of this argument. Heck and his team surmised that, due to their discovery of younger grains than they'd expected, there had to be a period 7 billion years ago, before the existence of our Sun, that stars formed at a much more rapid pace. It's so exciting to look at the history of our galaxy, Heck mused. Stardust is the oldest material to reach Earth, and from it, we can learn about our parent stars. The prolific scientist continued on. Emphasizing this meteorite also gives us insight into the origin of the carbon in our bodies and the origin of the oxygen we breathe. With stardust, we can trace that material back to the time before the Sun. 
The emergence of meteor was remarkable in that space came to us, resulting in the discovery of the oldest known substance on planet Earth. However, even eerier are the things we uncover when we venture out into the depths of space. People aren't going to the moon lately, but scientists are still scouring its surface for clues about the universe. In fact, China launched U-22, an unmanned lunar rover, in December 2018. After landing on the dark side of the moon, U-22 started tracking across the lunar surface. It constantly snapped pictures along the way, hoping to capture evidence of anything that could be scientifically significant. Scientists would eagerly examine each photo after it was beamed back to Earth, but they never spotted anything unusual. The rover needed to nap each day, however, giving them some time for extra analysis. During the rover's downtime, each photo was analyzed down to the smallest detail. As usual, scientists just saw a great deal of dust. But in one photo, something abnormal stood out. As you might imagine, the moon's surface is pretty plain. While there are plenty of ridges and craters, there isn't a great detail of color variation. Just about everything is the same shade of dusty gray. In one photo, however, there was a small glint of light. Something was shining at the bottom of a crater. The scientists were perplexed. Nothing on the moon should naturally be reflective. Reassuming control of the mission's rover, the researchers guided it back towards the crater in question. If something unexplained was there, they were going to see it up close and personal. U-22 crested the lip of the crater and dropped down into the dust. After a few quick maneuvers, its spectrometer was able to locate the strange substance. But what had the rover found? The Chinese scientists carefully maneuvered the rover's arm towards the strange object. Moments later, a crystalline substance emerged from the dust. But how did that gem end up buried in outer space? Given that the rover was still over 200,000 miles away from Earth, it was hard to get a good read on what the material was. One scientist, however, had a good idea. Mahesh Anand, a reader in planetary science at the Open University, suspected that the object could have been liquefied glass. Due to the vacuum of space, it would have solidified into what the rover found. Since the substance was discovered in an impact crater, scientists have taken extra interest in the find. They believe that it could have actually been a connection they've already seen on Earth. The glass could have been created by the force and heat of a meteor hitting the moon. A similar phenomenon had been observed closer to home, giving researchers an easy frame of reference. At the site where the first nuclear bomb was tested in New Mexico, physicist Walter Freeman explained, There is a glassy mineral called trinitite. That substance was formed by the energy released in the explosion. But the glass wasn't the first strange geographic discovery on the moon. In fact, astronauts on Apollo 17 picked up an unusual substance during the time on the lunar surface in 1972. They found some strange red soil on the surface and brought it back to Earth for analysis. NASA was shocked to discover what their astronauts stumbled upon in outer space. The soil was red, it turned out, due to a volcanic eruption that took place nearly four billion years ago. The moon might look cold and dark today, but some of those craters used to be explosive. With that in mind, scientists are optimistic that U-22's discovery could be the beginning of a major breakthrough. This may be the opportunity to learn more about the secrets lurking below the lunar surface. This substance would have even greater significance, Anand explained, if it turned out to have experienced interaction with water ice. And if water can exist beyond Earth, that changes everything we know about the universe. But as massive as outer space is, there are plenty of interstellar mysteries lurking closer to home. In fact, scientists investigating a crash landing found a strange artifact from outside our universe. In 2011, a meteorite named Katirka landed in the Koryak Mountains of eastern Siberia. While the landing site was incredibly remote, scientists were soon making their way to Russia to investigate. Given the fact that meteorites literally come from outer space, they almost always have scientific value. Each impact crater provides a new opportunity for discovery. It's like Christmas morning for an astronomer. But in this case, scientists didn't find any massive meteorites. They did manage to remove a few shards of interstellar materials from the clay-like soil. Those pieces, however, still proved to be significant. Analysis showed that these shards consisted of a mineral containing isotopes of oxygen and other particles. The scientists weren't quite sure what to make of this discovery, but they decided to press ahead with further testing. The oldest meteorites have been dated to over 4 billion years ago. Even the newest ones, which come from the moon, are around 3 billion years ago. 
but the scientists would find something even more notable than the sample's age. Upon examining the ancient material, they noticed something structurally unusual. These samples were clearly different than what was normally found in a meteorite. There was a different shape under the microscope. They found crystals. And while you may think of crystals as something pretty to observe in a cave or add to an engagement ring, they are scientifically significant too. Crystals are defined by a regular predictable atomic structure. Those lattice patterns are then repeated over and over, creating the glass-like material that we are all familiar with. But this crystal was different. While the crystals within the meteorite had the traditional lattice structure, it didn't repeat in a consistent manner. Instead, the connections fell into uneven patterns, unlike anything found on Earth. Slowly, the scientists realized what they were seeing. This alien pattern had never been produced naturally, but it had been studied before. Things were starting to make sense. These were quasi-crystals. While they had been produced by scientists since the 1960s, they would never been found in nature. In fact, some researchers even doubted they could exist outside of a lab. Paul Steinhardt, a theoretical physicist and cosmologist at Princeton University, always believed that quasi-crystals could form naturally. He recognized this meteorite as a massive chance to confirm his hypothesis. He and his team looked at the particles in the crystal and noticed something bizarre. The ratio of oxygen isotopes to other isotopes was way off. Slowly, they realized what that meant. They were looking at a new mineral that was not from this planet. The crystals were created in the high-pressure environment of outer space years before crashing down in Russia. The discovery proved Steinhardt partially right. While the quasi-crystals weren't formed on Earth, they were capable of existing in nature. It might not have been a full confirmation, but it was still a major scientific breakthrough. 